What's going on everybody? Welcome to the first episode of a heat hydrogeology uh, playlist. I realize that most of my subscribers are there for the geology content and I've lately been doing NCAA 14 content. Um, in the long run that'll make me a better video editor, but I, I wanted to start up a geology related uh, playlist and, uh, and my geo hikes uh, videos have been put on hold due to this quarantine and haven't been asking questions related to the FG uh, exam so if you have any just let me know but uh, let's get started with this so this is uh, this first episode will be uh, just an introduction to hydrogeology and throughout this series the book that I'm using as my source material is the Applied Hydrogeology, um, fourth edition by Fetter. It's basically like the Bible to hydrogeologists. I recommend that if it's a subject you're interested in, definitely pick it up. Or if you want to study it more in you know in depth, then with the Reg Review covers, uh, definitely pick this one up because it, it'll have everything and more. Um, can get pretty complicated in terms of the math but alright so the introduction to hydrogeology will go over what hydrogeology is what the hydrologic cycle is what the hydrologic equation is and you know I'm just going over very basic I'm not going too in depth because you can go really in depth and I think later in the book we go more in depth on the hydrologic equation but uh, we'll also go over gaining and losing streams and measurement of stream flow which I know the book goes more in depth later on so what is hydrogeology It's basically the study of geologic materials such as soils and rocks and their ability to transmit or retard water and I am a geologist for a large environmental consulting firm but I dominantly work on groundwater related projects uh, I do groundwater monitoring I do contour maps I do um, ISO concentration maps uh, based on analytical data will create a you know where the plumes are the contaminant plumes so yeah I, I study the uh, you know I, I do it professionally and it interested me the moment I took it in physical geology I knew that's what I wanted to do um, you know you're just trying to solve uh, problems related to groundwater which is typically contamination but I mean there are other issues across the United States like water scarcity in the southwestern portion of the United States where uh, a hydrogeologist is uh, sought after so the hydrologic cycle and I will show an actual visual of this but uh, I'll, I'll kinda go over what this is it technically has no beginning and no end but we typically start explaining it when it comes to evaporation off of the ocean but is not that is not the origin of the water molecule uh, you have evaporation which is liquid water turning to gas condensation is uh, gas turning into a uh, basically back into a liquid in the atmosphere and then precipitation is that becoming so heavy that it falls uh, to the uh, surface as rain or snow and then we have runoff which is due to uh, precipitation and that can be in the form of ice rain or snow and that's also called overland flow and if infiltration is when precipitation infiltrates into the uh, into the ground basically or seeps into the ground the Vados zone is basically the upper portion of uh, below the uh, well the upper portion of the regolith which contains soil pores, air, and water. And that's in contrast to the water table or the phreatic zone where there's no air. It's completely saturated with water. Um, transpiration is another term that will be used constantly uh, when you're studying hydrogeology. It's basically soil water taken up by plant roots and released into the atmosphere. And then we have a term called interflow which is basically water movement within this uh, Vados zone that contains air and water. And then we have the ca capillary fringe, which is between the Vados and the water table. It's the intermediate belt, and it's 
pores filled with capillary water. The saturation is almost 100% and the water is held by uh, capillary forces. And then like I said a little bit earlier, zone of saturation which is also called the phreatic zone, the water table, and that's where groundwater is. And, uh, and then we have what's called base flow which is the groundwater contribution to a stream in say a river valley. And then through flow is water that infiltrates into the soil on a slope and then moves down the slope as lateral unsaturated flow in the soil zone. Evapotranspiration is basically evaporation plus transpiration. It's the combination of the two. It's transpiration by plants and evaporation from land surfaces. And then magmatic water is you know, believed to be the origin of these water molecules that eventually reach the surface and become part of the hydrologic cycle. Uh, they're contained within magmas deep in the crust and in, geo in historical geology you learn that maybe water was introduced to earth by uh, comets, ice, um, but this is another way that water uh, originates. So these are a couple charts, not the best pictures but it works. Um, figure 4 and figure 5 out of the Fetter book. They're basically block diagrams, you know, showing the hydrologic cycle and then basically how water flows in, say, the Vados zone. You have Vados water, uh, you have soil water, and then you have intermediate Vados water, and then you have capillary water, and then it, it uh, grades into the zone of saturation, the phreatic zone, which is 100% saturation. Um, that's groundwater. Uh, hydrologic cycle, I mean, We'll go over this with another visual, but it, it kind of shows you basically a flow chart of uh, the hydrologic cycle. It's pretty good visual of it. And then this is a, a, a good visual, easy visual to uh, understand the hydrologic cycle. So, you know, if we start in the, say this is the ocean, evaporation of the ocean you know, creates uh, water in the gas form and once it reaches the atmosphere, temperatures cool, it'll condense into liquid and create clouds and as those clouds travel and gain more and more through condensation, they'll eventually become heavy enough to fall off or not fall off, but uh, precipitate and it'll come down as either rain or snow which will create ice. Um, that will melt and you know, rain becomes runoff, snow melt becomes runoff, and that'll flow right back into the ocean. You can you can also have infiltration during precipitation or snow melt. Um, typically, when you have this during the winter, your springs will be very pretty. And then it, this also shows evapotranspiration, which is the combination of you know plants transpiring water from their uh, from their roots and you know putting them into the atmosphere and it'll it'll eventually create clouds so this is a good little uh, valley a river valley showing uh, you have your snow melt you have a real river valley and uh, anytime the snow melts it'll run off down into the stream down the stream valley and into the stream um, same with rain and it looks like this stream is frozen or just has snow in it, but uh, that's what's called an input. When runoff is, you know, fed into the stream, that'll be an input to the stream's discharge. And when the stream is running or flowing at high rates, that means that some little arrows and stuff to kind of show you the flow. But, uh, okay, so we have precipitation which creates the snow, which creates the snow melt, you know, it melts during spring, and it runs off, you know, once it's melted. Um, precipitation that enters a slope and travels under the surface, whoops, under the, sur under the surface and gets to the stream, that's going to be called through flow, although typically it'll be on a slope that has soil. This one is rocky, but you get the drift. Um, and this arrow is just showing stream flow and then you have the water table with base flow so 
it's a gaining stream if uh, if the stream is gaining groundwater from the aquifer and if it's losing if the stream is losing water uh, to the aquifer that means it's a it's a losing stream but uh, it shows you the water table you know we don't know how high it is because we don't know if water is flowing in this actual stream but uh, just to guy give you guys a little visualization so we have the hydrologic uh, equation and simply put the inflow to say the stream is equal to the outflow positive or negative changes in storage which typically uh, is related to the uh, water table seasonally that will vary and it'll change the uh, storage of the aquifer and then we have gaining and losing streams gaining or affluent and losing or influent so basically when snow melt is occurring or if a lot of precipitation is falling and it's infiltrating into the groundwater and it's feeding water into the stream, keeping the stream level, uh, that is called a gaining stream. A losing stream is when we're going through a drought and the water table drops, uh, the stream will start putting water back into the aquifer and it might become uh, an ephemeral stream like we have in the western portion of the United States, southwestern I should say. And then we have the measurement of stream flow and uh, stream gauging. And one way to gauge a stream is to either you know, calculate it yourself or you can have what's called a weir, which is pictured right here. And it can be used to, to measure the discharge of a small stream. And uh, this formula is Q is the discharge and it's going to be length cube over time. So cubic foot over second is uh, the measurement for the discharge of a stream. V is the average velocity, which is the length over the time, feet per second. And then the cross-sectional area, which is this, uh, that'll be length squared. So foot, uh, square foot is the cross-sectional area of the stream. And in the next episode, we will delve into aquifer properties, which is obviously really fascinating stuff. Um, that will include, uh, I believe, hydraulic conductivity and, you know, stuff like that that you'll definitely uh, deal with when it comes to studying for the fundamentals of geology exam. <laughs>